folks, welcome ye all to yet another podcast of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us, people. Yes, it has. Flagons up to you all. Ooh, I think I'll have a sip of this before we get going. We do have much in the way of gaming to talk about, people. Yes, we do. And, well, we've got the one major topic from this week, but there's also been a number of topics sort of that I haven't covered from the last week or so before this week. So I've sort of added them to the list and we'll go into them. We'll deep dive. Well, well, we'll shallow dive, people. <laughs> I mean, as far as I'm aware, deep dive, really. Do we really want it, people? Shallow diving is fine when it comes to talking about stuff. I think you'll find. Although every now and then there is a good one. So we do have much in the way of gamers to talk about. Flagons up, people. I'm going to have a sip of this before we get going. Ooh, first one. Oh, it's been a busy, busy week at the at the at the day job, people. Good grief! It's always a good thing keeps you in work, of course. <laughs> it means my job ain't going anywhere anytime soon. But yeah, no, it's been very busy and and just non-stop really. So new project to crack on with as well, which will probably take me a couple of weeks. I would think looking at the the spec of it. So I'll have to delay any time off that I was about to think about taking just till I get that sort of up and running a little bit. And from a work perspective, it's been fine. It's been great. We've just been cracking on. Exercise-wise, I've managed to do four 8.4Ks this week. So we did Sunday, Monday. Uh, well, the, it wouldn't have been a two-day gap, but the weather was so awful, I couldn't be, right, <laughs> couldn't be bothered running in the rain. But I did Sunday, Monday, and Thursday, and today I've done an 8.4K. So the running's getting well back on track now. So, and I, I tend to try and do that at lunch to break my day up and get out and just get around people and fresh air. I mean, I realize I'm not talking to anyone, but, you know, get my tunes on and just get out in the fresh air is great, especially when the sun's shining. Makes all the difference to the mental health people. Yeah, I always try and get out and about, you know, even if it's just for a walk. I mean, it gets, I mean, I find if if I don't go out for three or four days, which which can happen at the moment, I really feel a difference in my in my well-being just mentally you know it does it does start to affect you and you have i really have to push myself to get out and the running lets me do that and even if it's just to the shop to get your groceries stuff like that you know i try and hold i try and keep that to once a week if i can but you know just stay at home as much as we can at the minute i mean if we keep staying at home obviously the in this country anyway the 21st of june will happen and we will be able to lift all the restrictions if we don't stick to what we're doing now and frankly, with the amount of traffic I've seen in the road in Blackpool in the last few runs I've done, people need to really, <laughs> you need to have a real word with yourselves because that there's no way people are staying at home with the amount of traffic that I've seen on the road. I couldn't cross, it took me five minutes to cross the road at one point because there was so much traffic on it. Like seriously, like we need to make sure we're staying at home. And and if we do, we'll we'll get this relief on the 21st of June. If we don't, the bloody thing will keep going. It will keep going. They won't lift it. So, you know, just keep yourselves at home while people get these vaccines, people. Calm yourselves down. Anyway, that's enough of me being dad. <laughs> so, yes, it's been a it's been a good week. And uh, I've, the recordings I've done this week have been really well. I've, I've managed to get loads in and the balance I found that. Like I'm doing well, we know that I'm. If you look, if you don't know, you can look at what what's on the channel. But the the two that I'm recording at the minute are Phoenix Immortal, Phoenix Immortals, Phoenix Rising, sorry, and Skyrim uh, remastered on the PlayStation Five with the 60 FPS model and everything. And I'm still cracking on with both of those and and still enjoying both of them a lot. It has to be said. It's probably I think maybe possibly the the time that I've enjoyed Skyrim the most. And I'm 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 getting stuck into like so many different quests and quests that I certainly haven't done before as well, and I think just sort of different playstyle, really getting into the magics and stuff. I think the first time I ever played it, it was I always kind of at that point in my gaming life always went for melee characters, never really touched on the magics at all. So it was always shield and sword and blah. But I really feel like I'm kind of I've got a broad scope of what I'm trying to do in it. Well, I say that. I mean, I've, I've I've literally dumped anything to do with shields, and it's all about magic in one hand, one-handed sword in the other, and just trying to get all of that up and knowing what to do with the smithing. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really 
I'm really, really enjoying it. And the 60 FPS, is it just makes all the difference. It's just so beautiful to play. A little bit, st I did, I have finally found a little, a few places where it gets a bit sticky. And that just comes from the mod being a blanket 60 FPS mod. And, you know, when it gets to a point where it's struggling, there's nothing there to rein in the graphics. So, you know, if, if it was an official patch, you would think that they would put dynamic scaling in so that they can, you know, if, if, the, if the system knows that it's not going to hit the mark of 60 because of the graphics, it will rein the graphics in a little bit. So maybe drop them to 1440p instead of 4K and then allow that 60 FPS to keep being smooth. And, you know, that that's the, that's the one benefit you don't get from these mods. And, you know, that it'd be still be amazing to see them come up with a, a, a proper official patch for that and, and for Fallout 4, to be fair. I mean, that's what's put me off playing Fallout 4 th all the way through because I, I feel like I'm probably only going to end up doing it again when an official patch comes out. And they did say, I, I'm sure they said there was going to be an official patch for Fallout 4 for 60 FPS on the Xbox, certainly on the Xbox Series X because they talked about it be be before the X came out. I'm sure they did. They tested it. But anyway, so we've got, you've had, I think you've had something every day this week, haven't you? Because you had Skyrims all the way through the weekend, last weekend, and Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, you've had an Immortals and uh, a Skyrim. And no, because you got an Immortals today, so it must have been Wednesday, Thursday, and today you got an Immortals, and you also got a Skyrim in each of those days as well. So you've had Skyrim every day, you've had Immortals for three days, and at the moment you've got Skyrim. <laughs> I've kind of gone ahead with the Skyrim. Skyrim I've recorded, uh, so you've had today, you'll get Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday have all got a Skyrim in them. And then Immortals, I'll try and record some more at the weekend and we'll get some more up next week. To be honest, I'm not that fussed about having Immortals every day simply because, well, A, it's a lot of work to, to give you two games every day. But B, because the 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 amount of people that are managing to watch Skyrim is still staying at quite a high level. With Immortals, it takes a number of days for the viewing figures to get up. So I feel like people are... Of, of sort of needing to catch up a little bit with Immortals and that could just be because I'm, I'm giving you a couple of videos a day and you don't get a chance to watch both of them and stuff like that so I'm feeling like doing three or four Immortals a week is not so bad so we'll, we'll stick with that for now but I'm still keen to get back to the Xbox One uh, sorry the Xbox Series X because I, it looks channel wise like I've kind of I'm favoring the the PlayStation and I'm I'm not really, it's just the Skyrim was playing so much smoother on the PlayStation, in the it, certainly in the first instance. And yes, there is those sticky places, but I've not felt it quite as much in the PlayStation uh, playthrough that I was doing. And plus, it wasn't really because of that. I, I would have been more than happy sort of doing it on the, the Xbox, but the playthrough that I was doing with the PlayStation 5... I just really loved what how I'd set things up and how everything was going with everything. And I just wanted to keep it going. So that was really the only reason. So I am conscious that I haven't got any Xbox Series X stuff going up on the channel. I've not I've not turned my Xbox on for a, a few weeks now. So I, I want to get something else going. And I think the candidate for that would be Kingdoms of Amalur, Re-Reckoning and get that. I think we were on part eight or something from, from when the, the X, when I started recording the X version, the Series X version. So I, I am tempted to try and squeeze in some Kings of Amalur re-reckoning for the Xbox Series X so that there's some Xbox content going up. And I am missing that game a lot, to be fair. So so there you are. So that's that's what my week's consisted of and that's what's going in around and around my brain, people. So what we're going to talk about today, we've got, well, we talked about this week's recordings, State of Olay, <laughs> as I've written here. State of Play from yesterday from playstation from sony and state of olay by the way is the mexican or or the, the spanish one the spanish one the olay the state of olay <laughs> i think you'll find so we've got that to talk about and uh, well i've got a list of what was uh, what was announced pretty much i think i caught everything 
and we'll go through them. It wasn't the biggest event in the world. It was only half an hour, and there wasn't a, there wasn't anything majorly jaw dropping in it. To be fair, but we'll talk we'll talk it through. We've got the FPS back compat to talk about the boost FPS boost that's come to back compat on these on the Series X. We've got we're going to talk about Anthem. We're going to uh, being dumped. We're going to talk about Blizzcom specifically Diablo two Diablo four, and we're going to talk about EA. Well, that that last one is kind of combined with Anthem, <laughs> so uh, I'll not say what it is. And well, it's it's about Dragon Age Four, so we'll talk about Dragon Age Four. So I tell you, well, we'll kick off with State of Olay <laughs> because uh, we'll just rattle through that, and you can I'll, I'll have had the visuals up and stuff by this point as well. Uh, we have a separate list of State of Olay. All right, so. In no particular order, apart from it is the exact order, in fact. We had Crash Bandicoot getting updates for the PlayStation 5. Woohoo! And I can't I can't tell you how much I love these PlayStation 5 updates solely and simply for just say the word 60 FPS to me. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> and if you can squeeze 4K on top of that, brilliant. If you can't, just give a 4K option for those people who aren't bothered about 60 FPS. But for me, 60 FPS is the game changer this gen. I don't give a crap if it's 1080p, 1440p, as long as it, or 4K, as long as it's at 60 FPS. I'll play it. I'll take the 60 FPS option every time, every single time. So, uh, Crash Bandicoot, it's got updates coming and additions. It's got 4K, 60 FPS, and adaptive triggers, uh, touches to it, and 3D audio added to it, and activity cards. So, I mean, it's gone all in there for, you know, taking advantage of all of the the things that, well, pretty much all of the things that the PlayStation has showed, the controller with the sound, with, you know, the graphics and stuff. So that's really, really impressive. Uh, Crash Bandicoot's probably quite a good one to make 4K60 because it's not like, you're not panning the camera around all over the place. It's a fixed camera angle and stuff that you're using. So those sort of games will absolutely be able, and we've talked about this before, open world RPGs, can't. they're never going to come in at 4K60, but the these sort of games will, and racing games, and that sort of stuff will be able to do that. So that's brilliant. And I haven't actually played this uh, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, I've, I've, I'm saying Crash Bandicoot. It's the, is it about time? It's about time. Something like that it's called, isn't it? The new one. And it's made by, not not Naughty Dog, it's made by the same people that did the Trilogy Remaster, who are also the people that are doing the Diablo 2 Remaster, which we'll talk about in a bit. And, yeah, so I'm absolutely stoked for that, because I've been dying to, to A, play the Trilogy, and B, play this new Crash Bandicoot. I think I'd, I'd quite like to play the new one first, and then see about going back to the the trilogy the trilogy remaster apparently for those of you who don't know aaron brew told me this it, the trilogy re, re, uh, the trilogy remake i should really say they are a remake aren't they i think yeah i'm sure they were anyway the remake or remaster version of the trilogy is on apparently in the collection on playstation so if you've got playstation plus you should be able to get that for note which is pretty impressive so i might i might oh, i need to remember to do that in fact so, yeah, super stoked for, for getting my teeth stuck into a bit of Crash Bandicoot. It's been far too long since I played that game. I think it was probably the first game that I bought, if not... Well, it would have been that and the football. were the first games that I ever bought for the PlayStation 1. And, yeah, what well, I'm pretty sure it was. Because we'd had an N64 up until that point. And then I bought it as uh, I bought it as an additional thing when for when Aaron came, uh, came around to mine when he was little and we could play playstation and nintendo and stuff so it was really cool um i've got yeah i've got fun memories of that it's really, really good I and mean, it was kind of the turning point for us because i think that's the point where playstation started taking over and final fantasy and all that started kicking in so it was a big turning point in gaming you were taking a little bit of hit on graphics there weren't you because it was 32 bit against 64 bit or something like that on the n64 against the well yeah hence the n64 and the the playstation was 32 but by far the better catalog i think was definitely on the the playstation one it was a massive hit that console wasn't it? and then after that i don't think there was a another nintendo console for a while because we went straight to playstation 2 at that point 
Aaron got a Games Cube, but I never really spent any time with it because he had it around his where he lived with his mum at that point. So he had it around there. I uh, I think I bought it for him. Pretty sure I bought it for him, but he had it around at his mum's. And then it was the same with the Wii. The Wii. I'm pretty sure it was me that bought him the Wii, and then it just sort of went to his place. So yeah, so it, it was all about PlayStation uh, at that point. And Crash Bandicoot and the football, I think, were the first two games that I got for it. So yeah, a lot of not nostalgia there. It'd be good. It'd be interesting to go back. I don't think I've ever played a Crash Bandicoot. The only time I've played Crash Bandicoot since is in Uncharted Four, <laughs> when you have that little bit of the game where you can sit down with. Uh, I'm gonna forget a name. What's her name? Nathan and. Go on, shout it at me, people. Anyway, you know what I mean. You can sit down with your girlfriend on the couch and play, uh, play a bit of Crash Bandicoot as a sort of mini in game. So. Next up was Returnal. I'm really not sure about this game. Uh, it looks fun. It looks visual. And also, you're probably going to be seeing this this stream better than I am when I've got these visuals up uh, behind me. But the, the, the visuals weren't great watching it live. And that's often the way with these streams. You're better watching it after the event because you get the proper visuals and how good it looks at that point but when they stream it live it's not great it's the same same with my stuff when i post it up on premiere the premiere doesn't look overly fantastic but when you watch it afterwards as a proper download then you'll you'll see the the best of the the graphics and the the 60 fps and all that sort of stuff it gets very pixelated when things are streaming live so i'm not sure if i'm sort of in my brain judging returnal a bit harsh but I don't know if it's up my street, really. It, it seems a bit weird, and it's got um, it's got these maps that auto generate. You know, like so every time you die, things are in different places, and I'm not sure if that's something I can kind of get into. Like, I, I, I quite like a level being a level and an area being an area and stuff. I get that there's probably a reason for it in the game, but it looks weird as hell, though. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of mind stuff going on and all that malarkey, as well as all the space stuff and the shooting and the action and all that sort of stuff. But it, I mean, looking at it, it looks fun. And I might be completely wrong, you know, but uh, it's just not quite hitting the mark with me yet. I need to see a lot more of, of what that game's about, really, to see to see if I'm going to get into it. But nonetheless, you know, it looks like there's been a lot of hard work on it. I'm sure other people are stoked for it. I know Aaron Brew thinks it looks great. So I'll have to wait and see. And I might be missing the point, really, of what that game's all about. Uh, Knockout City was the next one, which is this. We talked about it in the Nintendo one. It's basically a dodgeball game. And it looks like the kids all love it. But as far as it goes, it's an online, you know, milking cow. Milk the cow. <laughs> I think it's an online thing. You all just get involved with a bit of dodgeball running around the city. And and that's about it. That's all, that's all there really is to say about the game. You chuck a ball and try and hit somebody. So it looks fun. I bet kids will love it, but not not for me. And then there was Sif Sifu, I think it was called. And, well, I put down Japanese, but then it's Kung Fu. So I guess Chinese, but... <laughs> I look the way that the they were dressed and everything I kind of and and the hair and the the little beards and stuff that they had it looked more Japanese to me but maybe it is Chinese anyway it's a kung fu action action game and had low I mean it the kind of the action looked a bit sort of sleeping dogsy you know that sort of stuff but certainly the graphics weren't to that level these these seem to me these next number of games that it was all kind of, well, not the next number of games, that's completely false. But there were a number of games in here that looked like they were sort of smaller developers and, and this looked the same. But it looked fun though, but it just like, most of it was just set in a corridor fighting off loads of loads of guys with a bit of Kung Fu. So we'll see, see what, see what more comes of it. And then there was Solar Ash, which is a 3D platformer, which looked very indie dev. And to be honest, I've seen too many games like this really, where you just, shooting really fast through the world and jumping on things and picking things up and just non-stop like i'm just not sure how much room there is in the world for the same sort of 3d platformer game to be thrown around so but again i'm sure it'll be for somebody but didn't float my boat at all five night at freddy's security breach why couldn't i say security there i mean security breach so I've never played Five Nights at Freddy's. I understand that it's really popular. It's a bit of a scare fest, you know, a lot of fun attached to it. Not my bag, baby, but uh, it's a success. So why not keep making more of the badgers? 
And there was there was a big clip with that. It was a long trailer. And I don't even remember that it's saying Five Nights at Freddy's anywhere in it. You're probably saying, Steve, it's right behind you. But I just remember seeing Security Breach. And I nearly wrote down Security Breach. And then in brackets, looks a bit like <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. And then at the end, they went, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Anyway, it's on its way. Odd World Soulstorm got a a good talking about. Now, I Odd World's an interesting one. I remember playing Odd World way back in the day, and I want to say PlayStation One. Might have been PS Two, but I remember playing it around that time, and it, it it was all right for a little while, but it wasn't really at all for me. And this could be the case again. But I have to say that this game, every trailer I've seen of Oddworld Soulstorm looks visually stunning. It really does. I mean, it's like, you're just looking at it like, Jesus Christ. And I'm sure, was it that one they were talking about? They, they were saying that it's not 2D as such. It's more like 2.9D because it, it does have depth. Like, you're not just going along. You are going... It's sort of backwards and forwards as well, but side on. So, you know, so it's sort of 2.90, I think they described it as. But it looks like they've put a lot of work into that game. I mean, it looks stunning. It looks fun. It looks like the story has been well thought through and you're really going to care about this character. And I I think it's going to be a massive hit, that odd world. And I, I hope people give it a shot. And I think it's a game that is most likely going to end up on the collection on PlayStation Plus or something, or a PlayStation Plus game at some point, without any shadow of a doubt. But I think I think it I think it's going to get. I love that game. Every time I see it, I just think I want to have a try at that. It looks really good, and it's not the sort of thing I normally go for. But it just looks like it's got a lot of heart. It it, it kind of almost reminds me about uh, what was it the brothers a tale of two sons which to this day is one of the best games i've ever played in my life and it was there was just something about what i'd seen about it that i thought i'm going to give this a go and i think it i think it might have been a oh, i can't remember but I, I just wanted to give it a go and i just fell in love with that game like the story was amazing the gameplay was just so cute and and, and really fun and challenging to to do absolutely adore to this day i adore that game and i'll probably find an excuse to play it again on the ps5 or the xbox series x at some point but and i put i'm pretty sure there's a let's play on my channel for that so if you've never played that game uh search through my channel for brothers a tale of two sons and it's it's on there and at least you could watch a part of it and see if it's for you but it was so gorgeous that game brilliant loads of heart an emotional little ride and Oh, it's just beautiful. You can't help but be connected to that game. And, and fun as well. The gameplay was fun. So Oddworld, yeah. So I think Oddworld will kind of touch me in the in the same way to some extent. If it's got a good story like that. And then you have all these little puzzly missions and things to do as, as you're going through the world, possibly. I'm not sure it's something I'll get a launch, but I'll definitely be wanting to try it. It's out April the 6th, by the way, that. Uh, yeah, Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Now, Kina, I I remember the first time I saw Kina, I thought, oh, I like this. It's got all sorts of touches of Zelda and, and cuteness about it with, with its... Not, not, I mean, she's using a staff, not a, you know, not a sword and stuff like that, but it just had that little bit of a vibe to it, that sort of world. It, lo it looks really gorgeous, that game. And again, it looks like it's got a lot of heart in it. And I'm curious as to whether or not it's going to be sort of open world or, you know, um, I don't know if we've been told that yet or whether it's just going to be areas and then, you know, loading screen next area, stuff like that. But it looks great. It looks very RPG like. And, you know, even Aaron Brew was like, yeah, I, I still fancy this. Like there's something about it that just draws you in. And it's all about the magics and the world and, the you know, it, it looks really, really, really good, that game. And I hope it, it holds up to that when it finally comes out. I don't know that it mentioned a release date right enough. Then we had Deathloop, which ironically is a PlayStation exclusive <laughs> from Bethesda, which is now a Microsoft studio, or will be in a matter of uh, weeks and months, officially. But I mean, this is basically from the people that brought us Dishonored, and I'm 
I could never connect with Dishonored games. I've tried them. I got near the end of the first one. I tried the second one and got fairly heavily into it. And then every time I try these games, I just never make it. It was the same with Prey. Prey was made by the same people. The problem is that every time, like, even Prey just felt like it was Dishonored in space. You can tell it's the same mechanic, the same. I mean, all right, you've got guns, but it's the same. It's the same thing. And then Deathloop's the same. I'm looking at the trailer, the first-person gameplay. It looks exactly like Dishonored. So yeah, I feel like I'm getting the same game every time from that studio. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but the problem is that I didn't sync... I didn't... I couldn't click with... There was something about Dishonored I couldn't click with. Like, it didn't hook me in. Like, I just... I, I, I ended up feeling... I hate using the word boring. Like, it's not fair, but... I just, that's what it was like. It was like, I there wasn't enough there to keep me engaged. I just felt like it was a bit dull and it shouldn't have been because it seemed to have all the hallmarks of something that shouldn't have felt that way. But I just didn't, there was something about those games I just couldn't, couldn't stay hooked to. And Prey was, Prey's biggest problem was, and I enjoyed a lot of Prey, but its biggest problem was that enemies, enemies became very, very samey. And once the, the jump factor had happened a few times with something that was a cup turning into a monster. You know, that kind of grew old. And the biggest problem was the loading screens going from area to area were just a nightmare. It was like, oh God, you know. I mean, if they could have done it like Dead Space, where it was literally just opening a door to the next level and it was that quick to get through, then great. But it was just, uh, it was awful. So a navigation of the place just felt a bit off as well like trying to find your way around was a bloody nightmare half the time but it was but i i engaged with prey a lot more than i did with dishonored thought there was a lot more to prey than that i liked and death loop uh, that vibe is just not for me it, it, like, i'm looking at it and i'm thinking that that just looks like dishonored with guns so i don't think it's going to be for me but i know why people are excited for it. i get it but it's just not it's just not making me click and then at the end, there was a big reveal for... Well, you see, the most exciting thing to come out of this thing, which says a lot, is the the update for Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> it's not even a full game. Uh, there was a Final Fantasy VII Remake, Intergrade, it's called. And I don't know if this is all combined, but it was called that anyway, Intergrade. There's DLC coming, which is not free. Yeah, you need to pay for it. I don't know how much it is, but you, you need to pay for it. It's got a set of new characters and uh, it looks great. It looks really, really good. And it's an excuse to get back into the game while that they're on with the next part of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And it's coming out on the 10th of June. So it's not that far away. It's only a number of months, isn't it? And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it looks like, yeah, you're going to have to wait that long for the, pa the, the PS5 patch as well, because it all comes along at the same time. So it was the Final Fantasy VII PS5 patch features uh, fog effects, lightning, 4K option. That's lightning as in the sky, not from Final Fantasy <laughs> 13. Lightning, uh, 4K options, 60 FPS options. So 4K... At 30, you would think, and then 60 FPS at whatever, 1440p. I, I'm not sure if they actually said. They just said performance mode and visual mode. So 60 FPS is what I'm after, people, and I've been looking for an excuse to play it through again. I did finish it, but there's a lot of, there's still plenty of trophies I can go for. So yeah, 60 FPS option to that. And I, I'm not sure they mentioned loading screens. I think they did, you know. I think they mentioned faster loading times, which would be a big boon for it as well. A photo mode and the new episode with Yuffie, I think it is, yeah, Yuffie, and that's the DLC. So, yeah, so that was a really good ending to it, to be fair, because it's such a big game that it was such a massive hit and it was really, really well done. Fantastic. So there you are. That was the state of Olay. And so not not a huge amount to, to harp on about, really. I mean, you can imagine that the biggest stuff they're going to want to talk about will be later on in the year when things like the digital E3 and all that start happening. And I think the third party developers will be the big ones. Sorry, the first party developers, the big ones will be toward the tail end of the year, I think, for the big games, maybe. Ratchet and Clank's still coming, but funnily enough, they didn't even mention Ratchet and Clank in the state of play. So, you know, we kind of know it's coming, I guess, and we've seen loads of it already. So, so there you go. What else did we have, people? That's State of Play covered. 
FPS boost to back and pat, which is a really cool feature that Microsoft are adding to the back and pat program. Uh, there was only five games on it, though, at the time that I checked it out about well when i heard about it none of the games are anything that i would want to play i don't think at the moment but if they can start adding the the frames per second boost up to 60 for a lot of these games that are back and part i mean that's just going to give us such a quality of life when we go back and play these games it'd be amazing i mean to go back and play like uh, dead space in in 60 fps or the rpgs or the dragon ages say or you know i mean there's just a multitude of games that could really benefit from a from a you know a, a, an fps boost so i'm really excited about the fact that they're introducing it it's just going to be interesting to see what games they can actually do it with and it's also a very interesting pick of games because they weren't particularly great games they've picked so i don't you know that makes me think that the great games they want to do with it can't be either can't be done or they can't get the rights from the companies to let them do it or stuff like that which is a bit of a shame but i mean the games play super smooth anyway on the the x and stuff this this series x and all that but to have that super 60 fps boost on them would be fantastic i mean even they might even go higher with those old games so i was very excited to see that so yes keep our eyes open on that one people i mean you can see me doing all sorts of back compat stuff if that starts happening Show it all off on the channel. Finally, EA. Uh, will we do that first? Or we do Diablo. Let's do Diablo, shall we? Uh, nah, um, yeah, we'll do Diablo first. So from BlizzCon, which has been going on last few weeks. The bit, well, I mean, there's been a lot more at BlizzCon than I'm about to talk about. But, you know, <laughs> I've just realized I didn't put the big lights on because the sun was out. I decided not... Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's a bit better, isn't it? it, it it's all my own production in this uh, this studio, people. You know what I mean? I don't have lighting, people. I just, uh, <laughs> just have a switch. <laughs> I've got the ring light here, so that's why it was sort of glowing that way. I bought that ring light to compete with the light coming off the TV so that it wouldn't immediately dull when I was, you know, when a light picture came on. As it happens, I've not used the pictures for a while. A little bit of that is to do with the time it takes to search out pictures. But another part of it is that when I watched them back, the the, the podcast back, the TV was very flickery. It's almost like the camera, you know, if I do this on, the, on a 4K telly, it doesn't flicker. But this is a 1080p TV. And for whatever reason, whatever it does, it's probably to do with the, re, the, the hertz, to be fair. And the refresh rate on the TV is just being older. But uh, yeah, it did, the camera was picking up a bit of a flicker. So I wasn't sure that it actually looked that great anyway for a lot of the pictures. But anyway, so by the by, it doesn't mean I won't use them again. It just It's just part of the reason that I've not done any recently. But you've got these, you know, you've got the beautiful figures. You've got the candle, people. We've got a candle. We've always got a candle. And me. <laughs> and posters. <laughs> what I'd like to do, though, for a podcast, I'd like to have a proper podcast little setup where I've got all my some of my game stuff. Because all my games at the moment are in baskets just sort of tucked away because I don't have any shelving and stuff to put them on or an area where I can have a little gaming area where it's all kind of just stacked up and everything like that. So it is something I've got in me, me head to maybe think about doing. So it's more gaming interest around me and stuff like that. But I think this looks all right for the main part. Where were we? Oh, yes, Diablo. So, yeah, so there's a lot been going on at BlizzCon, but Diablo is what I'm interested in. And, well, there's two things happening that they are... Diablo 4 is obviously in the works, and Diablo 2 is coming this year. I think Diablo... Sorry, this Diablo 2 remake. Remaster. And I... If you look at the two, when you see the trailers, I mean, you can see absolutely there's a massive difference. You know, we're talking about a 20-year-old game or whatever it is for Diablo 2, but I think it was 1990 blah, wasn't it, that it came out? So Diablo 2, what I loved, I, I, now I did watch a deep dive, people, in... Uh, well, it, yeah, there was a deep dive and then there was some gameplay footage. So I, I watched the deep dive, which I won't show you here because it's about three quarters of an hour long, but it was basically... Uh, a YouTube guy and you can go and look this out yourself but it was a YouTube guy who's played Diablo 2 like for years and years and years and then three of the devs I think it was or two that had been working on the Diablo 2 
remake or uh, remaster. And it was really interesting listening to the effort and work that had gone into bringing this thing back to life. And these are, the, as I mentioned earlier, these this is the same studio that made the Crash Bandicoot, re, well, the remaster of the trilogies or remake, whatever it was, and the new Crash Bandicoot game, and which are super impressive and got really good reviews, probably better reviews than the original Bang <laughs> Bandicoots, to be fair. So they are they've done an incredible job. So they, they've now gone on to to I mean they may have other teams, you know doing different things but it's the same company and they the, the guy one of the guys said that when they were just starting because obviously the original game is like square they have to make it widescreen they have to try and you know bring all the art forward try and make everything better and add to it you know make it crisper and cleaner because they've got more power now they can give us more there was all sorts of things you wouldn't even think about that they've gone to hell and high water and back to bring us the the best possible version of diablo 2 they could without ruining what the original spirit experience was and for example they they wanted to get their hands on as much of the original artwork as they could so that when they were trying to generate the extra visuals for making it widescreen or just making visuals more stand out more and i mean there was tiny little things like there was in the the game little things of garlic hanging off of doors and stuff or something like that in a particular area couldn't see them in the original game but when when they've brought everything forward and they've redone the, and they looked at the the art and the original digital things they are there but they just couldn't be seen and now you like it's it's like that even they were surprised at the stuff that they were seeing but the guy the guy who who was kind of talking about that said well he goes i asked he goes i requested the what they had on their artwork uh, from the original Diablo 2 and they they basically gave him some stuff and it wasn't a huge amount and he said look do you mind if I if you give me access to your servers and I'll have a dig around and see if I can find you know anything extra and he found a loads of stuff I mean just he goes I couldn't believe how much stuff I found and it was really really interesting listening to how, what they'd found what they'd used how they'd managed to incorporate that into into or you know into how they've brought this game not not just onto a new gen of console, but in a way that's going to, you know, really impress us and, and make us want to sit with this game for a long time. And they've, they've brought the, I think it's eight player, eight, eight, multi, eight, eight player multiplayer, I think. Might be 10. I think it's eight. My, my brain is saying eight. And, you know, so they've got online only though, but the, but that was always the way with the original game anyway. And they've gone really heavily into sorting out things like the i think you've got like a shared yeah so between characters you can share stuff and pass stuff about as long as it's not off season off season characters stuff like that and you know shared loot type stuff i mean they've gone really heavily into trying to help with the things that were a bit of a burden with the old game that are now much easier to use. I mean, they've gone all out on it. And the more I listened to them, the more I was just like, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the visual gameplay that, you know, you probably, probably see some of this behind me, but if you look at the visual gameplay from Diablo 4 against Diablo 2, of course it's going to look, you know, a lot, lot better on Diablo 4. But Diablo 2, I mean, it is looking incredible considering its age from what they've done with it. And I'll absolutely be getting that on day one and put a bit of other channel, I think. It looks it looks like a, a bit of a hoot. And I've never played it. I've never played it. Diablo 3, obviously, is the only one I've played, which I really loved. Really, really loved that game. So with Diablo 4, I feel like... Because yeah, they said that... Uh, they've only said that Diablo 2 is coming this year. They've not said when. That would suggest to me that they probably had wanted it to come out by now. But obviously, with COVID and everything, it hasn't quite happened. So I think they're just giving themselves enough time to say, yeah, we're happy now. Uh, so just at some point this year, I, I can't imagine they're going to want to wait until the end of the year. But, you know, they've just said 2021, it will be out. So I'm really excited about that. Diablo 4, I think, will be a 2023. Super impressive looking at Diablo 4. It looks super, super good. And it's an open world game as well, which is really exciting. So gone is this area by area thing. You've got an open world to run around, which is going to be really interesting to see how that all works. You know, you've got mounts and horses, which they were talking about when I was watching part of it. And they were they were really keen 
to ensure that you couldn't fight on a horse. So what they've done is, or, or a mount of some description, so what they've done is make it as exciting as possible to and as quick as they can to leap off of your mount with some sort of move to, to begin a fight rather than, you know, get off my horse, go for a fight, get back on my horse. So, you know, they've made it exciting to like leap off and have massive charge attacks and stuff like that. So it looks amazing. I was watching the, it was the, I think the, I was watching the deep dive into the Rogue because they've had the, added the Rogue now to the the classes on Diablo 4. I feel like that game's still a way off, even though what we're seeing is is really, really good. I'd love it to be 2022, but if we're getting Diablo 2 Remake this year, I feel like maybe it might be spring 2023 for Diablo. But you never know. We might get it holidays 2022, but I feel like that game only started development a couple of years ago. So, you know, and I can't imagine, well, I don't know, they might be using the same engine, but I think I feel like they'll be using a new engine or a more up-to-date software package or whatever it is they do at Blizzard for Diablo 4 than Diablo 3 did. I mean, it looks visually much, much better than Diablo 3 anyway. Well, not not because there was anything wrong with Diablo 3, just because Diablo 3 went with that sort of more cartoon art style, whereas they've gone for realistic art style in Diablo 4, which I think is what people prefer anyway. So a much, much more like Pillars of Eternity, not Pillars of Eternity, Path of Exile. That kind of that kind of tone to it. So I'm really excited for both of those games. They look they look absolutely fantastic, and uh, I'm I'm excited that Diablo Two is this year, and that I will actually finally get to play that game just so that I can see how good it was. And I'll absolutely be be playing that on the channel and and try and get it as quick as I can. And well, there should be a physical copy. I'm sure they'll be doing physical copies of it. So I'll definitely get a physical copy. If I could try and get it from the place that sometimes gets me a day early, then I'll... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, there's probably going to be so much gameplay of it up on the interwebs by that point. It probably won't be that much of a difference if I get it, you know, same time as everybody else. And then, so yeah, Diablo 2 and, and 4, I'll definitely be getting them on, on, on at launch, people. That's absolutely up the channel street, innit? You guys will want to see a bit of that, I am sure. So, to finish off, people, to finish off, where are we? 47 minutes. Well, actually, I don't think it is, is it? Because I think I was faffing around a lot while before I started recording. I think we're probably on about 42 minutes. And all that. So, there was an announcement this week from EA, well, Bioware, actually, to say that they have finally decided, <laughs> well, they didn't say finally, but they said, with great, with great sorrow, we've decided that we're not proceeding with Anthem, 2.0 or whatever they were calling it they're not going to be doing any more development on anthem anthem is now basically done and they will continue to support the the game as it is but they won't be giving any more content to that or doing any more for it it's done so i think anthem will inevitably just die a, a natural death because people will stop playing it because there's no new content going up so i can imagine in about a year's time the server just being taken down now this is, I guess, I mean, there is a there is a core amount of people that were hoping for Anthem to sort itself out and become a, you know, become the game that they all hoped it was in the first place. And there was a lot, there was there was some good stuff in Anthem, but they got a lot wrong. And it was, you know, I think it was unsavable at this point. Irrelevant if they'd come out with, uh, an, and, and it's a very, very difficult marketplace. It's a, It's one of those marketplaces where, once you've got, you need to hook somebody into the point where they're going to play your game all of the time. And that's what Bungie did with Destiny and, and people have done with other online games. But you need to hook people in and have them on your on your game all of the time. You need to keep it interesting enough for people to do that. It's very, very difficult to do. And, you know, by, I mean, Bioware are loved for their, sing, their single player RPG games, you know, like... Mass Effect and Dragon Age are the two big things that we think about. King, well, Knights of the Old Republic was Bioware, wasn't it? Back in the day. So, you know, we, we know what Bioware Bioware are all about and good at. EA should have absolutely left them alone to, to not be doing anything to do with online. Now, the, the, the other thing that came out the back of this was that, believe it or not, there was, it looked like Dragon Age 4 was almost starting to look like it, it was a bloody game as a service as well. <laughs> because not soon after that they said that they've also decided to take all of the online stuff out of Dragon Age 4. Now, for me, you wouldn't you wouldn't say anything about that necessarily 
if all you were talking about was some mini online game like Dragon Age 3 had, Inquisition. Dragon Age Inquisition had that, I never played it, but it had that, and a lot of people liked it. There was that online element to it where you could just go on with mates and, and take down areas and stuff like that. But the, the, the main campaign was on its own and that, that was a separate thing you did as a single player. But apparently all of that, they've said that all the online elements are being taken out of Dragon Age 4 and we're going to concentrate on the story. So the upside is, the and, and I believe that all of the people that are working on Anthem are now going to be working on Dragon Age 4. That's going to be awesome as well because that's going to push things along nicely. Things should speed up. Things, a lot more thought process and a lot more minds going into the, the creation of everything, for, of, a, of a Dragon Age game that we all want to be amazing. And obviously we've got the we've already been told that mass effect is is on with the mass effect team are now on with a, a new mass effect game you assume trilogy whether they keep andromeda as something that was part of it or whether they just forget andromeda ever happened i i suspect it will be the latter of those two comments and you know they're on they're on one and i think as as aaron bruce said to me he said the, a lot of this is going to be down to if not all of it, the success of Jedi Fallen Order, because EA suddenly realized that if you let a team do it right and you leave them alone to do it right, single player games will make you a bloody fortune. And that's absolutely what happened with Jedi Fallen Order. So let Bioware do what Bioware do, which is fantastic RPG single player games. That's all we want from them. <laughs> if you want to put a little sub multiplayer game on it, that's absolutely fine. Do that. But you know, let them be what they're good at. And I'm glad that these these decisions have been made and that they're, they're doing that. You know, we know like this, this, this shit happened with Lionhead Studios. Remember, we all wanted Fable 4 and what we got, what was them creating this Fable Legends thing, which was an MMO that nobody wanted. And then instead of actually, you know, I think it was only a matter of weeks between we're not, we're cancelling making this and then they shut the studio down. I mean, it could have been longer than that. So Lionhead actually shut down entirely. So we can only thank our lucky stars. I mean, all right, we're going to get Fable 4 now from the people that do the the, the Forza games, uh, you know, but it's yet to be seen as to whether or not they've got the same magic that Lionhead had with them. But, you know, we can thank our lucky stars that it didn't get to that point with flipping... <laughs> Bioware because nobody wants to see Bioware vanish come on now ridiculous people so there you are there's a lot there that I'm excited about people I really really am I can't begin to tell you so lots to look forward to super excited for the Diablos absolutely and and the fact that we're getting uh, we're getting two this year I think Dragon Age 4 is probably a long way off yet I think we're probably looking at another couple of years for that at least and the same with Mass Effect. So Bioware now needs to just be left alone to do what they do best. However, we will get the Mass Effect trilogy very soon. I'm forgetting the date, but you all know it's coming. It's pretty sure it's spring slash summer, isn't it? So the but yeah, so Mass Effect <coughs> Mass Effect trilogy is coming very very soon, and I think a lot of the reason that that happened is because they thought right. If we're going to do this, we need to give people something while we're working on these other ones and, and give us a couple of years respite. So if you give everybody the Mass Effect trilogy remastered and crack on with these other two and we'll, we'll bring people new games in a couple of years, and that's absolutely the right thing to do, in my opinion. So you've got to tip your hat to EA. At least they've recognised the success of Jedi and they've, they've, they've now said to the other studio, Bioware, look, we were wrong. Single player games can be everything they can be and make us a lot of money. We're going to let you do that. And so go away and make us a game as good as that Jedi Fallen Order or better and make us as much money as that and we'll let you we'll let you do what you need to do. And that's great. That is great, people. I can't think of, of better news for Bioware, frankly. That's the way it is. I've got a little I have got a little game in two shots, but you can just see it sneaking out. <laughs> like a Superman V. Well, there you are, people. That is all I have for you. If I carry on any longer, I'll just be rambling on for no reason whatsoever. So there you are. I got there, people. Another another 50 minutes of me talking to myself into a camera. It's therapy, people. <laughs> it's therapy. So there you are. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in this podcast of mine today. And I shall see you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.